Hi, Craig Smith from the Home Education Foundation in Palmerston North, New Zealand. Another question parents often have about curriculum, uh, all sorts of questions about, can I teach history? Well, of course you can teach history. Uh, I mean, you have an, a concept of history in, in relationship to your own life. You can just tell family stories and there you get into history really easily. Uh, the best way to teach history is to read good books to and discuss them with your children. Biographies are some of the best things. Just read biographies, they're always so interesting. These are real life stories of real people. Tell your own stories. Um, I tell you, um, I remember um, when I first uh, set up, uh, I did the same mistake most of us make. I made a little classroom and I had my children sitting at their little workstations, gave them their homework, cracked the whip, right, get to work you guys. And of course it was just like a typical school situation. Five minutes later they were squirming around. They need to go to the bathroom, they need a glass of water, dropping their pencils on the floor. And it was hopeless and this went on for ages and I thought well, I'll fix you guys. Um, right, so I, I grabbed what I knew was the most boring thing in the whole world. A dry old history textbook. Right, come on over here guys, sit on my knee and I'll read you this history textbook. I love history, so I was going to enjoy myself, but I knew this was going to be so boring, these kids would just couldn't wait to get back to their desk and get back to their homework. So we sat there and we'd, we'd read the history textbook, and as we're reading away, here's what happened. I said, oh, do you guys know what this means? No, no, Dad, tell us about that. So I'd tell them all about it, and, uh, and it would in, uh, you know, get onto an interesting topic, and I'd chase that rabbit around for a while and I'd make it personally relevant to the children, naming their names, how they fitted in with all the stuff we're talking about. And then I'd be reading away and I'd say, you know, this reminds me of what, when I was a kid. Let me tell you the story about when. And then I'd chase that rabbit for a while. And um, an hour and a half later, my legs had fallen to sleep and I was dry as dust. Man, I had to get up. I said, kids, get off me. I, let's get, get up. I need to get going. I need to get a drink of water. No, no, Dad, don't stop now. It's just getting interesting. I mean, that was an hour and a half. I mean, a few moments ago, when I had them at the desk, five minutes was their maximum attention span, and now it was an hour and a half. What was the difference? The difference was I was doing it with them, and I was endeavoring to make it personally relevant and interesting. And the other thing, I was enjoying myself. And so suddenly I discovered a principle of teaching. Do it with them and make it personally relevant and interesting and be personally interested yourself and their attention span went from like 30 seconds to basically unlimited. I had experiences like that over and over again. It finally got through to me. As long as I did it with them, we could get through all sorts of stuff. One time, in fact, when it comes to, you have another question about a curriculum. What kind of a curriculum do I need to get? Well, there's so many out there. Don't even go looking. It's a huge area. It gets so confusing. But I discovered uh, one really interesting. I was reading about these different curriculum, you know, mastery learning, uh, Charlotte Mason sort of approach, uh, thematic studies, and then one struck my fancy. It said delight directed. Oh, that's interesting. So I thought the next day, well, what, what would I delight to teach my children today? And I thought, I know, nuclear physics. So I got my old book down, and I thought, oh, here we are, the, the construction of an atom how our atoms constructed. And I got the periodic table down and and my seven, eight, and nine year old and I looked at this periodic table and read out of this book for the next three weeks. That's all we did is looked at nuclear physics. We didn't do any history, but you know there's a lot of history attached to nuclear physics. We didn't do any maths, but you know what? There's an awful lot of maths attached to um, atomic numbers and valence shells and all that kind of thing. And we, were, we were going over this stuff for three solid weeks, all we did was nuclear physics. I was so thoroughly interested in I was so excited. My excitement and enthusiasm rubbed off on the children. And even today, as uh, in their late 20s and 30s, my children tell me that those three weeks were the best three weeks of our whole education, our entire home education experience, that those three weeks were the best. And my sons in their 20s, they can still tell you the difference between nuclear fission and nuclear fusion because we had such a fun time learning it back then. <laughs> it was great. So Delight Directed, and then I went back and reread the the stuff I was reading about Delight Directed and I discovered, oh my goodness, I've made a mistake. Delight Directed 
is meant to be what delights the children. That is what was supposed to direct the studies. Well, I discovered a new type of curriculum. It's what delights the parent d directed what we studied. That works just as well, too. In fact, I reckon it works better because you'll have a better idea of what your children need to know anyway. And if you delight in it and are enthusiastic about it and enjoy learning along with your children, they'll pick up on that enthusiasm and you can have a great time. You can't go wrong.